Air Emergency and the Way Ahead and Dr. Sunita Narayan to talk to us. And Dr. Uh, Narayan, of course, needs no introduction either to an audience nationally or even internationally. She is, you know, uh, very well known and uh, uh, in, in this area of the environment. And she combines, you know, a passion and zeal for the subject as well as a very scientific rigor and approach, which perhaps is the best uh, combination in any field. And uh, without much ado, I will then request uh, Dr. You. Narayan to uh, speak on the air emergency, the way ahead, which I'm yeah. sure all of us are very uh, concerned about. And uh, I think the format is that you will speak about 30, 40 minutes. 30 minutes, I thought. I'll keep it, try and keep it short because I can see a lot, a lot of, of questions and a lot of questions and I'd rather have a conversation. Yes. So what I'll do is I'll try and go through the big, I mean, everybody is dealing with air, everybody is breathing it. So I just, I thought I'd just give a broad overview. Okay. Um, I think for most of us who live in Delhi, the story is known. Um, chal hmm. um, this is not the first time that we have actually come to realize that we have an air emergency. Some of us um, are probably too young to remember it, but I'm certainly very old, so I remember it. And I was very much part of that at that time as well. Um, in the mid-90s, um, the air was really thick with black smoke. In fact, when I compare the air of the 90s to now, I can tell you it was much worse. It was actually because it was black particulates that we had um, in the air which we were breathing, except that the science of air pollution was not known at that time. And when CSE raised the issue of particulate pollution, um, in fact, Tata Motors took us to court, uh, filed a 100 crore defamation suit against us saying that there was no evidence that diesel particulates were carcinogenic, that there was no evidence that small particulates actually were dangerous for our health. Uh, but that was the 90s. Okay, that was the time when the air pollution issue was just beginning to take off. And what we proposed at that time was that instead of Delhi thinking about taking incremental steps to clean up our fuel, to clean up the quality of the emission standards in our vehicles, we needed to do a leapfrog. And that is where we proposed CNG. CNG came as an answer as a leapfrog, saying that if you took the BS1, BS2, BS3, or Euro1, Euro2, Euro3 route, we would take another 20 years to catch up, and that would be just too late. Changing the fuel gave us much cleaner emissions. And so that was the route that we pushed for. And as you all know, it was very contentious. Uh, I remember every time we went to court on those days when the issue was being discussed, invariably at night a bus would burn. I mean, it reached a point of such farce that even the judges said, you know, I, do you really think that we are so stupid that, you know, just the night before we are going to listen to this case, a bus burns and you tell us that CNG is such an experimental fuel, it's never been tried, it's never been tested, and so it is not possible to do. But Delhi did it, and I think we should have some, um, we should take some courage from it, because from what I'm going to tell you, we need a lot of it for the future. And we took that courage, we took the transformation, and as a result of it, we managed to clean up our air. And we have data to show that the air did clean in the period of the early 2000, uh, but today, and that was the past. Today is what we should talk about. Pollution is back with a vengeance. Okay? And let's also be clear, and this is a constant debate I have, and I will try and explain that, and I hope if anyone has further questions on it, let's be very clear. Pollution is worst in winter, but it does not mean that there is no pollution through the year. The sources of pollution remain the same, other than stubble burning, which happens for a month in winter, but it is the fact that you have winter sets in, inversion happens, the cold air means that the, the particulates settle, moisture in the air, like today's rain, not enough to wash it off, but enough moisture in the air that you get particulates to actually sit on you. 
You can't breathe. We suffocate and we are outraged, and rightly so. And that's the winter pollution that we are dealing with today. The sources of pollution, and this is why it's important to understand, these remain constant through the year. There is also no rocket science to this. The sources of pollution, and there are three studies, two stud three studies in <coughs> Delhi which have inventorized pollution. There is an IIT Kanpur study which was done in the period of uh, uh, somewhere in the decade of 2000, uh, 2011, we got that study. There is a Terry study, Terry ARAI study, and then there is the Suffer IITM study. Now, I believe, I mean, we can all have our biases. I am very clear that the Suffer IITM study, from everything I've seen, is the most rigorous. They've also updated their emission inventory, so we get more up-to-date data. But let's not quibble about it, because if Terry says that vehicles contribute about 30 percent and Suffer says it's 40 percent, the fact is it's still very large. Okay? So the only difference between the two studies is really the contribution of vehicles to the total pollution. Otherwise, there's not really much difference. And the sources of pollution are transport and industry, two of your biggest sources. Combine that with suspended dust. And I do want to make the point to you that suspended dust per se is not a pollutant. If it was, then you would argue that parts of Rajasthan are the most polluted in the world. It is dust coated with emissions from combustion sources. So what makes dust toxic is power plants, industrial pollution, vehicles. So that is what makes dust and the dust we breathe which is, um, becomes toxic. Then of course there is now new sources of pollution, things that were not anticipated as much, and one of them is garbage burning. That is turning out to be one of our biggest sources of pollution, um, not in terms of contribution, total contribution, but in terms of local air pollution that we are beginning to see.